you I just felt so seen but like in my all of my weird ways mm. and I was like in there That's like important. crying but also it was like hella goofy yeah. but it was also like tragic as fuck mm, movies should take you on journeys they did they did a spectacular job for sure. I will say that they but, normally do good so for example like what I was saying like you lick your hand and whatever like we was talking about the kids he had to like fucking bite his chapstick and chew on it or like <sighs> one episode they had to like fucking put it like one dude had to put like a trophy up his butt <laughs> like it's have to be, be the like weirdest shit. it has to be the most <laughs> random weird shit that yeah, just be like crazy. do something weird and you have to do something weird in order for you to be able to jump universities that kind of makes sense like you gotta do something so abnormal that it's like all right the, the, you know. they don't belong here yeah yeah, yeah. i get that that makes sense <laughs> right so yeah nah yeah so I'm imagine a, a kid just like licks his hand and like touches some shit it's like oh he finna go so next time i see kids the, doing that they about to, <laughs> they about to jump, yeah they about to jump ship <laughs> they about to they out of here <laughs> that was crazy yeah um so that's not what i wanted to talk to you about but i do want to see that um yeah. so that's pretty cool mm -hmm. um so if you had like a tiered list um mm -hmm. where would you say that you put like yourself as a priority in that list in my life, just in general. Yeah, in, in yeah, in your life or in. Ooh, that's a crazy question. Is it? Um, yeah, because for the first time in my life, like literally, probably like this year, like maybe like this month, just started, started this making month, you a priority. I just started making myself a it priority. It takes time. Yeah, like just now, like. You know, a lot of transitions, a lot of, like, hard things have been happening in my life. And mm. I feel like right now I'm at a point where, like, I have no choice but to prioritize myself. And it's, like, a cool experience. Like, I finally fucking committed to therapy. And I was hey, so, congrats. like, <laughs> I was so, like, anti-therapy for a really long time. A lot of black people anti-therapy. Like, it, but it, it's, you know what it is, too? It's an ego thing. Because mm. for me, it wasn't, like nobody told me therapy i didn't have the experience that oh, people so told me to therapy was it. it was more so like i thought that i was so in tune with myself that i didn't need help that i could just figure all my own shit out and it's like at the point where i was like aware enough to like know the things that i'm working on and know how to fix them but i still wasn't doing it i was like okay well you might not need therapy to help you recognize things need but you need motivation. therapy to help you put those things in motion because mm -hmm. with the shit you've been doing ain't working right even though you get it like you right. know what you're supposed to do it's hard to make yourself do that exactly and so like i feel like i've i've had therapists like for play play like oh yeah fuck it i'm gonna try it yeah a couple times didn't really stick to it and like for the first time in my life i'm like really like committed to, yeah. to doing it like, i've been in that same boat like i ain't I, I haven't like gotten therapy at any point um i'm not against it right. it's just like everybody in my family is always like you crazy if you if you need therapy there's <laughs> like something wrong with you nah. uh, which isn't the case at all uh but then on top of that i just for the longest i felt like i like i understand what i'm supposed to do but again i'm not doing it right yeah you know, i'm just sitting here understanding but not like right <laughs> but i feel like you've changed a lot yeah slowly yeah slowly you did it on your own time and yeah. that's beautiful but you know if you want to ascend then yeah, maybe it's hard though because yeah it's hard though because also you can't just get any therapist like very true you know like people be like oh search one online and blah 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 i'm like yeah and then when you don't relate to that person or they can't help you or like whatever like i know some people that like need therapy really badly but they are so witty and smart that i feel like they might manipulate their therapist <laughs> you get what i'm saying like it so it's like if you don't have anyone that matches up to you on that yeah. like mental level and can understand you then they're not going to be able to help you so so with that um can't you just like talk to a friend like openly so the thing about therapy that's helping me specifically is that i am an external like i'm like a venter like i vent mm -hmm. and shit like i talk mm -hmm. about my problems everybody all my friends and family know like like when i'm going through something i'm gonna talk about right, it yeah, I do but same shit. we're getting to the age where 
not even an age, like it's been the time where everyone has their own issues. And like, also I think people are setting boundaries more. And so they, they feel like, you know, like you're kind of like dumping on me, you get what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so it's like, I had to recognize that like, sometimes my friends don't want to hear my same story over and over and over again, right. or talk about the same shit over and over again. Or sometimes my family, like, you know, my mom, my parents, whatever, they're not in a space where they can relate to what I'm going through or even offer insight because they're too emotionally invested in my well-being. You get what I'm saying? Like, I your therapist that. is emotionally invested in your well-being, but in a way, they're not, they're not, they're invested in your well-being, but they're not emotionally attached yeah. to you. They also gotta be there. Yeah, they're like a neutral person, yeah. right? And they gotta listen. You yeah, they have to listen. listen to um, luckily, though, my therapist is she's she's like i feel like she actually cares because she does and i right. actually met her through a friend she's like uh, she's the family of one of my friends and so mm, okay it just made me feel closer to her where yeah. it's like you know she actually knows me outside of therapy but we have boundaries set but like she i feel like she actually does care yeah. like it's not like I just found her on the internet and like I'm paying her and I'm like, who the right. hell is this person? You know? So I think I, me finding someone who was like close to home, but not too close. Right. Yeah. It really has helped me feel like, okay, like it's worth spending my money. And then the way that you were introduced to them and like somebody recommended them, I feel like that's probably the only the way. Best that thing. You yeah, should, exactly. So yeah, then you go get a proper outcome. Right. And so it is, it is hard. Like, you know, I, it, I know some people struggle, but at the same time, I think that like, if you commit to just like your own way of helping yourself, like mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a way that could work for a lot of people if they actually tried it. And especially if there's someone who likes to talk, cause yeah. it's like now I have the safe space to talk and I feel like I'm able to get everything out, but I'm also able to come up with solutions instead of me just talking to my friends and they're like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know? It's crazy how, like, when people re respond to stuff, it's like, all right, I got to say something. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. That's uh, okay. Right. You could have just not said like, nothing. And I be, I, I know my friends be like, child, I been told you to stop fucking with that nigga. <laughs> 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 you know? Like, I know. Like, they be tired of me. They don't want to hear it no more. But then people also <laughs> got to understand that sometimes when you're talking about stuff, like you, it don't necessarily mean that you looking for a solution. You're right. just trying to talk. Exactly. Sometimes it's just like, I just want to get it off my chest. Like right. it literally has nothing to do with anything. Right. But a lot of people feel the need to like solve your problem for you, which right. is kind of, then you start getting into arguments Too much. and, and stuff then it's like and they're like, they're speaking from their own opinion right. they're not really everything get clouded. yeah it's like it's just it's a lot it's and so there's there's less i have way more clarity and way more and way less convolution right now in my life and i feel like i'm like navigating um i would say like my second really big like heartbreak mm. but the way that i'm handling it i'm like amazed at myself Cause I'm not like necessarily an emotional that was the weakest wreck. Clap ever, but, but <laughs> yeah, like I, I imagine I'm it was obviously a great like clap. emotional. Like yeah, like I, I I had my my moments where I was like really fucked up about it. But like you know, I remember times where like in the past where shit happened to me. Like I literally like wasn't. I was like paralyzed. Like I couldn't yeah, do shit. I couldn't. Yeah. And, like now it's like we gonna cry, but we gonna get up. Right. I also am like more present, like I'm having fun with my friends and like if thoughts come about, like it's like, it's just kind of like passing through, right. you know? And it takes going through stuff to learn how to deal do with that. that, that way. Yeah. You and know? so you don't by default do, you got to grow into that. Right. Exactly. Like, when people get older, a lot of people look at it as like a, like an age thing, but, but like, I guess like, yeah, you're growing physically. It's a like, wisdom thing. Right. Yeah. And that you can know, happen like at mental any age. age. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so how important is like for you is setting and managing your intention when trying to execute something like if you set a goal like how important is that um i think it's become more important especially since i started doing creative work mm -hmm. um i remember like 2017 
that was when I first did like my first book and installation. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was always known as like the home girl who had like a bunch of friends who was creative, but never really did anything herself. And I did, I got tired of being that person. Like I just got tired of like letting everybody else do shit. And I'm just like sitting there supporting or watching or Mm -hmm. whatever the case is. And, um, I, I wasn't that skilled into like how to make my ideas come to life or like all of that. Um, but when I put out my first book, it was called Nameless, A Post-Traumatic Self. It was a poetry book. Um, I just remember, like, having this switch where I was just like, you know what? This is a by any means type of situation. And I had to get myself out of, like, that, like, lack of completion thing. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, a lot of creatives, like, are people that, like, never... um end up doing what they say they're going to do is because they start things, they start things and they just don't finish it. They just don't see it through. And I remember like telling myself, like, no matter what it takes, this is going to get done. Like, Mm -hmm. and I think that that was the turning point for me where I was just like, okay, you can execute. You just have to like hold yourself accountable, you know? Yeah. And then from there, like I just started doing mad shit. And it's like, once you complete one thing, you see how easy now it you is. Know that you could and do so it. now you know you could do it. And then you see how easy it is. It's like before I was seeing my friends do all this shit and they were like all in streetwear and in fashion and in this and DJ and in blah, blah, blah. And I just was like, how do y'all do that? It looks so hard and blah, blah, blah. Like you psych yourself out when really like most of the time people are going to applaud you just for completing the yeah, thing. You just got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you um, know, I think a lot of people like start to derail because they forget that like to be a creative and to like build a career as a creative you got to believe in yourself completely because ain't nobody else could believe in you Mm -hmm. it's like the one situation where like if you stop believing in yourself you you're gonna fall off you're not gonna be able to do what you want to do right exactly and so i think for intention that that was a big thing to answer your question and the second part like now that i have more like time and like um completed things under my belt Mm -hmm. i would say also like letting timing just take its course like for example like my last project accents i'm like laughing because you got the vinyl right there Mm -hmm. i'm like oh it's in it's in a glass case (laughs) (laughs) y'all and Um, it's orange and it's orange yeah nah so um letting timing just kind of like do its thing because like for example that project um it was like two almost three years in the making yeah that took a minute yeah and i mm-hmm. thought that it was gonna be done in 2019 like i was just like oh yeah it's gonna be done it's gonna be done and then mass shit happened the pandemic happened this happened whatever the case is but what i learned through that process is like every time i had a deadline and i didn't meet it my idea became sharper mm-hmm. and more refined and more pieces that were necessary got added to it to where now i can honestly say like this is the first um, project that I ever completed that actually like meet met the way that I envisioned it. Mm, so like in the past, yeah, in the past I was always like, I could have done this better. I could have done that better. Like I honestly don't think I could have done that any better than what I did. And like, I'm very proud of myself. But also, it's just instead of me like getting down about deadlines, now what I do is I write all of every idea I have down Mm -hmm. and I just kind of like let life take its course. And whenever something happens that triggers that idea that I wrote down, then I feel like it's time for me to start working on it. And then I start working on it and I don't really set a deadline. It's just like little by little, I start doing things like for accents, like, you know, the first thing I did was, um, I started writing the book Mm -hmm. and then, Um, I had all these conversations recorded on my phone and then I realized that I was taking pictures, but like, it was just like aimless. Like I just was taking pictures because I like film photography. And then it was just like, okay, well you can't just have a record. You got to have the fucking, um, visual component too. So then I create the whole, yeah. So then I was like, okay, then I started shooting once I realized that I was actually going to use the photography and that was my first time showcasing my photography, then I started shooting with more intention. And mm-hmm. then that's how the photos came out like more beautiful. Cause it wasn't aimless anymore. Right. Yeah. And then I signed up for a fellowship and they gave us um, some money 
to do a project that was like archival and mm -hmm. instead of me doing a whole new project i just did something i just used it to pay for the records right, like yeah because it, it, it fits that mm -hmm. and like all these little things were happening that was just like adding to the completion of it and like i lost a lot of people along the way in terms of like people that signed on to work on it but couldn't anymore mm -hmm. like all these things happened there was a lot of transitions but like at the end of the day like i just knew that this was going to be finished i didn't know when and i just kept chipping away at it yeah and it's Im it's important knowing how to pivot right because um, like you go be thrown obstacles and a lot of people don't finish executing stuff right. because they like you hit the wall right and it's like all right well you no, hit I'm the gonna, wall you gotta up. climb over the right wall. yeah like, everybody ain't equipped to climb over the wall through though. that bitch or something like yeah some people like, not mentally ready for the wall right you know like it's it's a lot it's it's a reason why it's hard mm -hmm. you know like people achieving things and people be like oh that's crazy how you do that and it's like you let's just keep just doing do it, it. <laughs> right but you can't tell people that because right. they want the instant like all right but i need to be the most yeah. successful at the start of doing it mm -hmm. like, that's not how it work you right. know that's not how it work the thing about it is most people are not passionate very true people just in, want money in anything yeah they're not passionate mm -hmm. in anything and i'm a super passionate person. you are you are and so anything that i do like me having to get that shit out the mud like fuels me because i'm passionate about it like i don't do anything that i'm not passionate about right as you, sh you shouldn't do right. nothing that you're not passionate but about. the thing about it is like a lot of people hit a lot of walls because they're not passionate about anything yeah. like at all a lot you of know? people ain't even find themselves yet right. or don't even understand what they're doing in life yeah to even, you know and so for me it's like i don't mind like hitting the walls and having to jump over the hurdles because like i have to like nigga like this what I signed up to really? do and I love this, it and I want my want. vision to come to life because I love this like I want to tell a story so it's like a baby right. you know it, it is <laughs> it, it's, it's your creation you spent like all this time and all this effort doing it um mm -hmm. so how do you motivate yourself to do that it's like the the passion thing is funny because like I don't feel like I have to necessarily motivate right. myself like I just feel like I, 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 I haven't been on Twitter lately, but I tweeted something one day where I was just like on a rant and I said something along the lines of like, I have so many varying interests and people don't understand that I'd be all over the place or, or be like, how do you do this and that or this and that and this and that. And it's like, these are all things that I really am passionate about and things that I took the time to learn about and things that I love. And it's not a matter of like motivating myself to get up and do it because it's because more so like it's more so like if I don't do all of mm. the things, I might actually die. Like I feel I like feel I feel I, like I, I might like wither that. away. Right. <laughs> like you know, like, like what what am I doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, if I'm not doing what I want to do, what right. the hell am I doing? I remember you telling me um, that like that's how you end up making music every day. Yeah. Like, cause it's, it's like, it's if you just, don't make music every day, you feel like you might just, like, yeah, it's, it's just and it's no not point. like even a suicidal thing. It's yeah, just it's, literally it's just, like, I need to be happy. I need to. Yeah. <laughs> like it's literally like, if I'm not going to sit here unhappy. Right. If I don't give myself the space to fucking do photography, to DJ, to fucking make clothes if I want to, and right. I'm not even a fucking designer. Like mm -hmm. if I don't give myself the leeway to execute on the things that I think and the things that I dream up, then like like I'll die. <laughs> I would consider you a designer of sorts. Yeah. Uh, I, because like you're designing experiences. You're yeah. curating like you you've released products, right. you know, you yeah. you've curated putting those together. That's mm -hmm. still like you have the mind of a designer. Yeah, thank you. I I feel like I consider myself like co-designer in conjunction with my friends that mm -hmm. help me put it down on paper. Um because I definitely am hands on. Like I don't mm. just give people ideas and be like, or tell them what I want and, and like, then here, go and then here go do it. Like I actually tell them like, I want this to look like this. I want this font. I want this color, et cetera, et cetera. And the only thing I don't know how to do is use the software. But hey, like you could, you could pick that up. Yeah, like I, it's it's been, it's hard. But like I I remember like even for the cover of like the accents thing like. My homegirl Bree, she put a little design in place um, prior to, but 
she ended up not being able to complete the project because she moved like to North Carolina and stuff. And then when at the time I was working with It's in Scope and like Marvin James, that was the foundation, and that was where we completed the record. But like I took a picture of the floor. And the, the I remember the you concrete, said that. yeah, the I concrete floor that. is the background of the yeah. thing. But like I told them, like I want to use this as the background instead because I needed some texture. Like I didn't mm-hmm. want it to be flat. Like even with you niggas have a good day. Like I remember telling Rick, my friend Rick Dove, who's like a great designer, and he's like used to own a an art gallery, um, Packard Packard Studio. Yeah, I was like, I want a font that looks like when it says thank you on the Chinese food bag. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> and was, I want stars. That like, was great. Yeah, like, I remember, like, me giving that direction. Like, mm-hmm. it was like, I see it in my head, but I literally just don't know how to use Illustrator. Right. So. But you, you directing, you, you know, yeah, yeah. like, mm-hmm. and, like, never forget that, like, a, the mm-hmm. majority of, of designers don't do every step Right, of and, like, Black Seeds even, I drew that font. So I- explain, explain what Black Seeds is. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Black Seeds is this initiative I started when everybody was like donating money to these random ass <laughs> Black Lives Matter funds yeah. um, where I would just sell T-shirts and with the money that I was making from the T-shirts, I would use it to directly fund um, a black initiative. So I did um, supplies um, for s- for teenagers who were entrepreneurs um, mm-hmm. the first time and the second time I did doula scholarships and so we we funded Mm. two um young ladies to become doulas finish their training and then the third time i I have a shirt on actually right now um we did this tie-dye edition in collaboration with my friend um kayla who Mm. has her brand called reality check so this is the reality check black seeds collaboration yeah and we gave all of these funds to um the hurricane relief in new orleans That's tight. what was the name of the last hurricane it uh, wasn't katrina it was <laughs> katrina was years but, ago. Uh, i was there for katrina. hurricane irene hurricane it, i, I could have swore it started with an i we we donated the shit from hurricane relief <laughs> for right. the homies it got the there. hurricane that happened last year right it got there. They, we, <laughs> right they, it got there know. and it was used for the right thing and i think our funds if i'm not mistaken our funds were used um, to rebuild um, a little, uh, like a bodega that That's got tight. torn down. That's yeah. tight. Um, so, yeah. Uh, shout out to um, E. Buckles. E. He, Buckles. He is um, out holding it down for New Orleans. He actually um, worked with the same people who did Genius, Kanye's mm. film. He's a filmmaker. Tight. And so he's in New York. Um, but, yeah, we... we got in touch with someone who's actually a New Orleans native mm. and he's told us where the funds were going and everything. That's tight. So, then you get yeah. to like actually track and yeah, see where exactly. it's going. Yeah, exactly. So that's like my little philanthropic thing. Um, yeah, I want to do more thing. of that. It's just hard because like I have to pay to produce the shirts. Yeah. And yeah, then, it, it take, yeah. It take, it take, it take money. It takes money, but like at the same time, it, it, it like, it's so cool to give and it, honestly talking about it that's kind of really cool because i didn't notice that like i did all of that stuff yeah. until i listened when you first like announced <laughs> that i was like oh shit this is like yeah. one of the coolest yeah, things it might, be, it might be time for a new black seeds project hey <laughs> fully supported yeah i gotta do, do another it, design yeah. i gotta start drawing some more fonts and shit yeah you gotta yeah. get back at it mm-hmm. so you sometimes go by nameless so why uh so what what's what's behind that name like why'd you choose that i'm activating (laughs) (laughs) activating (laughs) activating um (laughs) on this plane um so nameless originally um like in 2015 um my friend eddie he goes by seven eight and Mm -hmm. he is a videographer and a director of photography for like a lot of music videos a lot of things um he actually um, helped me with the You Niggas Have a Good Day promo video. Tight. That's like really fire. Yeah, that was hard. Um, and he's worked for Red Bull. He's done YG videos. He's done, I think he's working with Kendrick right now. Like mm. he's like so low key, but like that guy yeah. when it comes to f- like um, 
photog- director of photography when work. When you're good at shit, you don't have to brag, brag about, about it. Brag about it, right. And he's <laughs> been in the field with me for a long time. Um, so me and him did a shoot, and he came up with this little like cover for what was supposed to be my online like magazine or something Mm. if you will or like my website Mm. and what it was was i was originally gonna like be a journalist yeah like that's Mm -hmm. what i always wanted to be was a journalist so i was just gonna like write about the culture write about this and that whatever and i think uh that came from like i wrote this like 40 page paper as like my exit paper in college like my capstone course and it was about like um an anthropological study on music festival culture Mm-hmm. And from there, I was just like, oh, well, maybe I could do this. I could go to festivals and, like, write about them or whatever. Right. And I think I had went to, like, a selection festival or a selection show at the region, and I w- was, like, supposed to write about it. And, like, he made me this little promo video and stuff. And then, like, he had to sh- – he didn't show up to film it because he got caught up doing some shit. And then from there, I just kind of felt hella discouraged. And then, like, nothing was cracking with Nameless for a while. But it was originally the name of a platform. It wasn't my name. Mm. And then when I did the Packers Studio thing where I released my poetry book and that installation, that was the first thing that I ever did under Nameless as like a platform. And then by that time, I had my website and everything. And then when I taught myself how to DJ, people started calling me DJ Nameless because they're just like, you might as well be Nameless, like whatever. So that name was assigned to me when it was really like, I'm Anessa and I have this platform called Nameless. Right. But then people started calling me Nameless and it just stuck. Uh, you, you fully morphed, now I'm molded, <laughs> yeah, molded even, with the platform. Right, even still, like when people meet me, they'd be like, you're Nameless. I'd be rolling my eyes like, my name is Anessa. <laughs> like, I, you got to get used to that, especially the more like, the more like attention and the more like credibility you get. Yeah. The more and more people going to call you that. It's just hard because like, I don't feel like I'm a character. I feel like I'm myself. And I feel like people subscribe to like an identity. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't ever want people to forget that like I'm not an identity or a character. I'm literally just me doing shit. That's the unfortunate (laughs) side of being a creative person. Like by default, like onlookers or people from the outside, they're going to they going to try to put you in a box. Right. And they need that so that they can package it and you know tell other people about it and shit like that right and Um, so that's the part that's like hard but like i do need to like just own nameless more as mm -hmm. like and people calling me that because i do feel like sometimes it's hard to streamline like i've had situations where people see some shit and they don't know like i'm the person who made it or whatever the case is because it's like a a disconnect between anessa and nameless yeah like even like bridge that gap right even like now like i have to sign like my photos and I signed them as Anessa, but like, I don't know, like, I, like I thought that my artwork would be like Anessa's thing, and then like Nameless would be like the DJ thing, but like they're yeah, like, they're nah, like blend. it's gonna all be the same Any, thing. Anytime so like, you do anything with music, <sighs> everything just instantly blends because right, people don't got time to compartmentalize if you do yeah. anything music. And my aunt, she was just like, "What are you gonna sign them as?" And you need to sign these all as the same thing. Like yeah, you can't you do. be you do. like sign and shit and then like 20 years later people are like yeah can't so archive it, exactly it. you gotta think about like brand consistency for yeah. years mm-hmm. you know and even with some as simple as signing a name you gotta okay like what is this gonna be 20 years from now right and so i yeah all of my photos right now are signed anessa de la cruz 21 because that's the year that they came out mm-hmm. as of now but like i definitely feel like for future projects i'm gonna have to start just signing everything as nameless um but yeah i don't know anyways oh so to tell you about what nameless means i did assign meaning to it at first it was like just kind of like going through like and being able to like explore um different shit and not having like a name or title attached Mm -hmm. to it and then the more that like um i evolved as a person and the more that the platform also evolved like it just kind of like made sense that like I'm definitely not attached to one way of doing something right and so if someone says like you're a photographer you're a DJ you're this or that like 
nameless works because it's like at any given time I could be any of those things. So right. like not don't put a name to it. Like that's why I thought it was a great. Yeah, like, and like, but name. that that meaning like did not. Yeah. Because honestly, what happened was I couldn't figure out a name, <laughs> and I was walking in the alley with my friend Eddie. That's why I brought him up, mm. and I just was like, shit, I can't figure out a name. I'm gonna be nameless. <laughs> And, but then it ended up and hitting. then it ended up sticking, <laughs> and I was like, I, we were walking. He was like, I was like, damn, that's actually a good that's name. A name. And then I had to like create a meaning out of it, and it was just like, damn, low key, that's tight because you could. That means you could you do, do anything whatever. you want. It's <laughs> yeah. just a perfect, you know? perfect situation. Mm-hmm. And so it was a happy accident, right? Yeah. So you were talking about journalism like a, a bit ago, and mm-hmm. like how important do you feel like? writing and how important do you feel that writing and like emotional expression like public mm-hmm. emotional expression in that form how how important do you feel like that 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 is um i felt like it was really important when i first started and i had all these i used to write a lot of poetry and so like i was like being super vulnerable with my work mm-hmm. and then I mean, art is vulnerable. Yeah. And then I wanted more privacy within, like, my life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like social media and, like, a lot of the public spaces were that much of a safe space. And so I kind of took the lens off myself and put the lens on community. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I still think that writing is a vulnerable space for me to talk about what I see but in terms of what goes on with me, like, I don't think I would ever be in a space again write to that, write yeah. about myself and like the things that like, I feel it. or if I do, it'll be kind of like in a, um, in a general way. Like it won't be like me writing it. Uh, like it won't be like my personal experience. It'll be kind of like third person. Yeah. Or, like, I get you. Yeah. And then also like Different writing about a community and like, you know, there's a lot of situations you could bring up and mm-hmm. a lot of things that need attention brought yeah. to them regardless. And it's still an emotional experience, but it's just not like my, it's not like it's, it's emotions that can be applied to like everyone in my community and mm-hmm. not just like whatever I'm going through internally. Right. It's not just like a personal. Struggle. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not trying to Ruby core the shit, man. Like we're <laughs> we not trying to do that. Right. <laughs> so that's how I feel. Um, but writing is still very, very important. And like, I'm very much still a writer. And I think that the ways that I like express that, like, it's just like, it's, it just changed. Like it mm-hmm. didn't become like this, like, published journalist like person that writes articles for this magazine right. like but sort you're of still thing. writing you but still i still write presenting yeah ideas and concepts like, yeah and, which is which is tight and so it's kind of cool to like to see how many ways that you can shape the medium when people only think of it in one way very true yeah very true so. um do you feel like you you're you're a part of a community And do you feel like you belong to that community? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard. Like, yeah, I do feel like I'm a part of, like, I'm a part of L.A. I'm a part of, you know, the black community. Mm -hmm. I'm a part of humanity, (laughs) I would say. Just, like, good people in general. Um, But I feel like I always felt like I was alone in a sense of like I kind of float through yeah. different communities and cliques versus yeah, like a lot of people that I know I know them from one specific area right. and I kind of like float through everything mm-hmm. and I never am attached to like one crowd or one thing like I've been to fucking was there ever a time that you felt like you wanted to belong to a specific community and that, that uh, don't gotta be like like I just mean like you were trying to get into a certain yeah, community. Yeah. I think that if I'm interested in it, I'm going to go seek it out and see what's going on there mm. and all of that. And then when I finally get there, it's like, it's cool for the time being. But then I realize that's like, it's not something to attach myself to. I feel that. And also it's like, I can't attach myself to one s- specific community. Like, for example, like I be in Silver Lake a lot, or I be in Lamert Park a lot, mm. or I be in fucking like 
the hood a lot. Like, you know, like I live in the fucking jungle. The, the hood is subject. Yeah. To, I mean, it's be everywhere, you know, but you, you know what I'm trying to say. So like, I've, I've lived over there too. And I never understood why people said it was such a wild area. I've never had any yeah, bad you experiences. Didn't, there. You didn't grow up there. That's why. Okay. So I grew up like during a time where like you could not when walk there. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But like now yeah. it's like, you know, Anytime I talk to people from over there, they're saying all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I've been skating down the street. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, right. I used to go for walks every morning. Like, yeah, it's really dope over there. Actually, yeah, it's tight. But you know, when I was younger, it was definitely not like that. Um, but what I'll say this: you're not gonna catch me in one place like all the time because it's wherever like my interest lies like Mm -hmm. you know like sometimes i want to go get a beer and sometimes i want to go yeah you could like you (laughs) you're gonna be in different places i'm gonna be wherever i I need to be and wherever i want to be and also just like just meeting different people i feel that you know i i agree with you about about that I've never really found like communities out here, mm-hmm. even though like I'm aware of them and I see like the pockets and, and everything. But like to me, like a lot of shit just gets so clicky. Yeah, it does. And then and like I, it's you like, got to commit to being a part of the click to get <laughs> accepted in the and it's like, I don't want to do that. Right. And that's why I think that's why we're friends, because we just be out here floating. Yeah, but I just be here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go nowhere. Yeah, you know, but be inside. Do you think that that DJing um, was an easier way for you to get more comfortable with being out more? Definitely, because okay. I yeah, like sometimes I don't go out unless I'm DJing, right? Like, and so it's kind of like a strange obligation where it's like you got to show up, so you might as well have fun, you know. And also that that also allowed me to like float around like even as a dj like there's like even clicks in djing like there's of people course, that hang out everything. with like you know they'd be doing like the high end the fashion shows and this and that and then there's people who do like all the hood parties there's people yeah. who do like the brunches there's people who have their own little like collectives like there's clicks within djing too and i can honestly say like i'm the only one that i feel like floats around all of right. them um i remember you was talking about learning uh like turntables and you were saying yeah. like some djs don't even respect you if you're not if even, you're not yeah you exactly and so even that community like i tapped right. in with that community for a second and that was cool like you know so and you know i'm still very much like trying to learn that as well um so it honestly yeah i think it enabled me to like be out more and to really know like my city and what's going on in my city like any for Mm. any type of person i can be like oh i think you might like this or i think you might like that or whatever the case is i wish i i wish i was that knowledgeable about an area (laughs) i think i would have to like an area first right like i know you from here but like this ain't really my place yeah yeah atlanta wasn't my place um, so you felt like out of place a lot. Yeah, but Louisiana that's special. Was in my place, Chicago. I like living in Chicago. Uh-huh. It's just cold as fuck. Right. I don't like being cold. I feel you. Yeah. So I'm trying to get back up there, like to live, mm-hmm. but like all these complexities and, and stuff like that. Uh, but one day, cause I got a lot of family out there. Yeah, no, I feel you. Well, Chicago's dope. I'm actually the next accent show is in Chicago. That's hard. Yeah. Musically, I've I've always felt like Chicago had like and, and just people from Chicago, just the way that they are. Like I've, I've yeah, just, they're really real, like yeah. just raw and like cool. It's not all Chirac. Yeah. <laughs> it's not all fucking. So even so, Lil so Dirk what's what's them. considered Chirac? Is that like the South Side of Chicago? I don't fucking know. Uh, I guess the part. Yeah, I guess like they talking about like sixty third and all that shit. I don't, I don't shit. know like, none of that. I don't know. We're not even gonna talk about that. <laughs> I don't know none of that. Right, but there's a lot of, like, a lot of creativity in Chicago, a lot of artists that are from the Midwest or even just, like, bred in Chicago that are really dope and, you know, creative. Like, there was honestly a time where all of the artists that I listened to was either from Chicago or affiliated with Chicago. Right. And I was actually shocked. They, because... They were all tight. They were all tight. Did, yeah. You know, it's Chicago's like dope. like everybody Shout out came to Chicago. from Shout out to the Chicago. Right. <laughs> like people were it's actually creative people doing creative things. Yeah. Instead exactly. of just rapping and singing. Right, exactly. So you I know, and I, I fuck with Chicago for like the ingenuity. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so how do you manage creative relationships like as a woman? Because mm-hmm. I feel like like people. I, now, now, I don't know this, obviously, because I'm not a woman, mm-hmm. but like I feel like like people got their own narratives sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like it's probably harder to deal with some of those because mm-hmm. you never really know like what people trying to get out of situations right. and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, I will say in my experience, the biggest thing in terms of like building relationships and how to navigate them is that I had to stop being afraid to ask, first of all. Like, I had to stop assuming that because I wasn't, like, so-called cool enough or because I wasn't, like, in this group or in that group or because I felt like... Ain't nobody cool enough. Right, exactly. Everybody's (laughs) fucking lame. That's the one thing you figure out. Everybody's lame shit. Everybody's lame and shit. So then once you you have that point of view, you don't care to ask. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, if you say no to me, I really don't care. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you know, and so um, I started just asking, you know. Mm -hmm. I started... I stopped being afraid to ask and... In situations where there was pushback or where I did feel like some shit was funny, like, I just, honestly, the way I handle it is I just tell the truth. Like, if I don't like some shit, then you're going to hear about it. Right. And I'm very forward. I'm not, like, passive at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't mind confrontation. Um, And I think I communicate very well. And so, what I've learned is that people don't like when you communicate well because... Very true. They want to dominate used, the situation. Yeah, they're used to dealing with people who cannot say what they want. Because most people can't. And when you are someone who can articulate and say what they want without making a fight about it or you can right. oppose that's, something that's without getting some type of way about it, they're just like, What? Like, like, is what this you, what you doing? is this a challenge? Like, it's like confusing. <laughs> so I think that in terms of some of my relationships um, in certain spaces that I've navigated in, that's what I've learned. But when you come at people, you know, and you're able to say what you got to say without like getting all up in arms about it, but you're telling them like that you politely disagree or whatever the right. case is, they honestly have no choice but to respect you. Exactly. If it's done the right way, they mm-hmm. don't respect you. Yeah, they have no yeah. choice. And sometimes like, you gotta you you gotta figure out how to say certain things mm-hmm. in a way that people are gonna hear it. Right. Because everybody don't like communicate the same way. Right. So you know you thinking that you respond in a certain way might mm-hmm. not they might not interpret that as that. Right. And an- another thing too is like as a creative, you also have to realize that the burden of proof is on you. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people don't. You're not entitled to anyone to trust your vision. Right. Like, you know, so if you don't prove yourself and prove that you can execute, then they're going to treat you any kind of way until you prove yourself. And to be honest, like in certain situations, like like with accents or whatever, like a lot of people didn't see what I was doing until it was done. Like until it was done, until the gallery was there. Yeah, like sometimes everything. people not go get it. They, they didn't like, get it. So me trying to explain it. But your job as a creative to, all right, like, all right, let me. Put this in a way that you can understand it, even if it got to be fully done for you to get it. Yeah. But, like, I'm going to make you get it. Yeah, exactly. And so, for me, it was just, like, with that project, I had to really, like, calm my ego down when I was getting pushback on certain things because I was just, like, you know what? At the end of the day, what matters the most is finishing the project and not that I don't like how this person talked to me or whatever the case Mm -hmm. is. Like, let me just swallow that. And then when they see the shit up, they're going to have to come back and say, okay, you did your shit. Right. And they have to treat you differently because exactly. they they see you as a serious artist mm-hmm. now. Like, I feel like it's a lot of like low key, like participation trophies and shit. And it's like, bruh, do some shit. Right. And then you get the respect. And, like, then, if it, and then if it don't work, do, do something else. So do something it again. else. Yeah. Like you can't be afraid to fail, but you right. also can't expect for everybody to just kiss your ass because you say that you do something. Like, exactly. if they haven't seen it, it's not real to them. Like, the burden of proof is on you, right? Like, you know? And uh, you have to make it real, and you have to make good shit. Like, it's a lot mm-hmm. of really, like, trash shit. Yeah. Just because you're starting to you do know? something don't mean that it's tight. 
Right, you exactly. Know? And then right. also, it's okay if it starts off not tight, and mm-hmm. then it slowly gets, gets tight. better. Yeah, you know, just like, learn from it and fix it. Don't keep it staying the same way. Right. So. You got the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So. Can I hit that? Yeah. Thank you. That um, what you was talking about kind of brings me to something else that I wanted to uh, discuss. So, um, how do you, how do you look at or, or balance, not even really balance, like, so, so there's different realities, right, of, like, what people, under the umbrella of, like, support, and, like, supporting people, and, like, having people support you. Right. I feel like on one side, there's the expectation of Mm -hmm. what you know people expect shit from you and then people you expect people like you expect people to show up right. like and they they expect that that like equal thing but um the reality is that that don't that don't always that happen match up, yeah. and then sometimes people hold grudges because you wouldn't at they thing and all this stuff like how mm-hmm. do you how do you deal with like managing expectations um you honestly you don't manage it. You just let go of it. Like, True. I get that. And it's like whoever shows up for you, they show up for you. And whoever doesn't, like, fuck them. Because like, it's not for them. Yeah, it's not for them. And that's it, really. Like, um, I've noticed little things. And I'll, I'll mention it to, like, a friend or something like that when I peep it. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, you have to also understand that, like, everybody's cut from a different cloth and sometimes people not cut from the same cloth as you like i know for a fact that like i move genuinely in the world and i think that everybody who meets me has the same perception there's not a lapse in perception of who i say i am versus what other who other people say i am because i'm not weird (laughs) yeah you know and so when i see that you know people talking about people and they say this person is that person, but they saying they another way. Like, first of all, I take the time to meet everybody and see everybody and like get to know them for myself. But also it's like, if they on weird shit, then like, I just don't fuck with yeah, them. Like, like, it's like, you, bro, you don't you're, gotta put you're weird. That. Like, I, but maybe nobody ever pointed it out. Yeah, so exactly. you gotta be the person to point it out. Yeah, and so, like, in terms of support, like, I peep little shit. Like, I know, like, there's been people that, like, I go to their stuff or, like, they, they do a certain craft or whatever and, like, or they um, make something or they sell something and, like, I've purchased stuff from them and whatever because I genuinely like it. Right. And then they come to my shit and, like, they never spent a dollar with me. And it's like, well, you showed up. If you don't like it, it's not for you. Then don't yeah. buy it. Or sometimes it's just performative. Like they just show up just to be there. A lot of shit yeah. is performative. And they don't really show up to actually support and put their money where their mouth is. But right. it's like, you can't pocket watch people, first of all. So, like, I just, like, take what comes to me and leave the rest. Like, I, I, I think trying to micromanage your support system or the people who support you is like it's counterproductive to what you're trying to do because yeah. if you're trying to do some shit like you gonna get there regardless if this person paid attention or this person bought this or this person showed up like so it's like you I just gotta I keep just you just gotta fuck. keep going <laughs> yeah I just keep going like I peep shit but at the end of the day the way I move is like if I genuinely like something then I'm gonna support it regardless like right um, it's, you, what you do doesn't determine how I move like even like social media and shit like I follow a lot of people that don't follow me mm-hmm. but it's because I like some people they, take that shit personally yeah they take it's it personal like, it's like bro it's the internet the fuck up like you know <laughs> like I like what they post so I'm gonna keep following them right if, even if they don't the only thing I the only thing that I don't like is when people unfollow you and then follow you back and keep doing that that's, that's yeah, weird because it's like that that shit is weird right. but aside from that like none of that shit matters yeah it doesn't matter like bruh if i don't like what you be posting or i'm tired of seeing you at the top of my fucking feed because the algorithm like be on some bullshit and every time it's some bullshit like i'm gonna unfollow you but when i see you in real life yeah like when i see you in real life like 
it's love because it's like, bro, your social media content is not you. Yeah, that's a whole like, different thing. As a Some person. people can't detach that. Right. Though. And and like, I honestly don't care, bro. If right. I like something, I'm going to support it. And I hope that people do the same for me. And if it's not for them, then that's fine. But like the train don't stop. The like, one no. thing that I will say is that like, I do think that people need to adjust kind of their perspective of like what like because a lot of people will like not support something but then like if it was validated by some by Somebody something else, else want to support it. right yeah. or are you so quick to go spend and like not to make this a race thing but like people be so quick to go spend money on some established and like that a yeah. white person owns and then like you talk yeah. you talking about oh we got soap made by black people we got this and that we got this and that mm. it's like uh i'm, I'm gonna just go over here to, i go to target right yeah you know like, like a lot of people do shit out of convenience and also just, like, for the name's sake and all of that. And it's like, bro, that's why it's like, for me, I just buy what I like. And mm-hmm. it doesn't matter, like, who's wearing it, who said it was fire, right. whatever. Because like, corny. Yeah, it's corny as fuck. And I think it's, it also, like, takes away from, like, personal style. Like, mm-hmm. me and my friends was talking about this. Like, it's a lot of people you see in L.A. and, like, they look like they got that shit on. But it's not matching up for some reason. Because they don't understand what they're wearing. They don't understand it. They just, they just went and bought it. Because mm-hmm. like, it's like a mad people that moved to L.A. And they seen that certain styles work in certain areas. And then they put they go get the fit. And then yeah, the next time people, you see them, you're like. It's people buying starter kits. Ain't you from kit. Atlanta? Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> people come out here and get this. the, the so rapper like, starter kit. And that's why like, I just wear what I like. Right. Like, you know, I piece together. I, I don't pay attention to trends. I don't pay attention to what's this. I'm like, this is how I feel that day. And this is, like, what I'm rocking. Like, if you fuck with it, then cool. But it's, like, it seems like everybody is just, like, copies of each other. Yeah, like, it's, it's weird. But then, like, we also live in a bubble. Like, being in L.A. and then, like, Atlanta. Right. Like, you in the two places where people are going to be doing this. Right. But aside from that, hopefully it's not like that in other states. Right. But one thing I will say about you, you said something about um People buy shit from white people or whatever the case is. What I said earlier is like, we got to stop giving out participation trophies. Mm -hmm. I need for... I kind of have to take back, like, I support black businesses first, always. Don't get me fucked. Don't don't get it fucked up. Don't ever get it fucked up. Don't ever get fucked up what side I'm on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I had to also start specifically supporting good black businesses very true it's a lot of trash and very there's true. trash white businesses too. yes there's trash there's trash small businesses period. in general but it's like if there is a white person or asian person that does something and there's a black person that does something i'm gonna go to the black person first but if they're not, not doing good. it of quality right. and the only other person who could give me this at the level that i need it is white or asian then I'm going to go to them. Right. Because I feel so like people do can't think about support. People can't clock support based on race. You have to right. clock it based on if I'm doing the shit right. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I honestly wish that a black people would swallow their pride and open a nail shop that does feet. Because I still go to an Asian nail shop because I need there, to get my hands and no feet done at the same place. There's no black nail shops that do feet? No. Black, the black That's girls crazy. don't want to do feet. <laughs> They just want to do hands. That's wild. And I get it. The designs be fire, but it's like, bro, I can't go to two Somebody got to switch up the game yeah, and like, like start open doing Open a real nail feet. shop and like do pedicures. Like, I really, that's just an, a light example. But it's like, it's, it's a lot a, of it's things. It's a valid example. Yeah, I have though, to stop you know? supporting, like I have to stop solely supporting black businesses because they were black and I mm-hmm. had to really look at the quality of what they made. Right. You and gotta I, factor that in. Yeah, Some people still, just be doing stuff just because yeah, just they're to, black. just because they're black and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, it's a black business. Support me, like nigga. That don't mean that it's I'm this not type. Buying that BLM T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> of all like, things, I'm not buying that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Things. Like this is an example. Just like, jump to I, yeah. Like <laughs> I'm not like not, you know, no shade to anybody that made a BLM T-shirt, but it's like, bro, like people is definitely cashing in. Cashing in. Yeah, you know, it's like, and bro, it's like the shit is weak. Don't don't think that we can't see through a scam, right? <laughs> like right. Just, just because you're doing it under the guise of being right. 
like oh support the black business like some of this shit is sus Mm -hmm. so it's like now it's like i'm not only supporting black business i'm supporting good business right yeah that that have what i need like and as a business person like i hope that i'm always putting out quality and if i'm ever not i hope that people tell me (laughs) right (laughs) you know and i feel like that's a better like thing to to like base progress off of Mm -hmm. you know it's like you you just like the goal is to make a quality product the goal is to make a quality experience you know and whatever happens after that cool right people don't fuck with it at least it was high quality right you know you can't tell me shit you can't you can't say it's not art so in the discussion you can't really say can't say shit about art right in general uh, even if you think it's trash, it might not be trash to somebody else. Right, exactly. So it's like, I don't know. I'm just at this point, I'm just buying what I like. Um, As you should. And being you gotta people. Dress your avatar in the mega uh, in, in the. In the metaverse. In the, metaverse. <laughs> in the parallel universe. Yep, That's in the stupid. meta multiverse. That's funny. You got a metaverse avatar? No, I don't. You're not gonna have one. I'm not building one. I don't really want to be in the metaverse. Yes, it's, it's, it's I'm weird. I'm trying to be right here. That's weird. Where I'm at. VR is cool. Like, I got an Oculus. VR uh, is cool. Yeah. yeah. I've done that a couple it's times. It's cool for short experiences. Like, yeah. they trying to pitch, like, you could have a job in and the metaverse. There, I don't want to fucking do that. The mountains and all that. Just like, the idea of, like, because I, I tried out, like, the, the, the shopping thing. <laughs> and I was like, this is so dumb. Like, I'm in a store in the house acting like i'm in a store <laughs> <laughs> right like, but that's like they was going deep with the pandemic route like uh, there was this this episode of um what's that shit called black mirror where it was like riding bikes to power like the energy or some shit like that. Like, yeah. And they had to ride a number of bikes a day, and like you have all your basic needs met, but really you just are in this little capsule. I like, think I saw that. You can't break out of the real world mm-hmm. unless you go on this like t- this show that's for entertainment, and it's like a, a a talent show. And then once you go to talent show, like they'll scout you to do this or that. Like you can't beat it. Like you end up. In the next, they like, just put you in, 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 in yeah, the some thing. bullshit. But like, this guy, he was like riding his bike, riding his bike like crazy amounts to make the currency. I saw that. I, saw I think I saw that. Yeah, he was trying to make the currency to like free his girl because she ended yeah. up being like a porn like um, slave or some shit mm. like that for the TV show because she wanted to get out and like she went on the talent show and did the shit. So he was trying to like free her, but like you can't beat it like you right. can't you know and it's like i feel like mm-hmm. that's like the way they be trying to sell virtual reality like it's like a world that's not tangible and like and even like the nft shit like nft is cool cryptocurrency i get it like i feel like where i stand on that is like it's a cool wave to catch you mm-hmm. don't want to keep missing opportunities and waves with it right but at the same time having a physical painting is never going to mean less to me Right. Than having a fucking minted, like, file format of it. Like, yeah. Like it's the, never, is like, I would much rather have art and hang it in my house. Right. So I, I do feel like. In my real house. Right. Right. Of course. <laughs> I do feel like cryptocurrency is very important for our future. Mm-hmm. Um, NFTs and art, I feel like is a complete misplacement. Don't like, just be ugly. It, it, and it, and it, it it's not even a good use for it right. because like an NFT is like it's a contract like it's provable that that something happened mm-hmm. there's way better things to use this on than than fucking images right like, that's that's trash I don't know what people be doing <laughs> people be interneting right mm. it's too much like I just be wanting to but then they go sell you on it because, like, you create stuff. They go be like, all right, you could have a gallery in here. Right. You could, you know, you could have this. You could curate this because they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. That's what's next. Like, virtual real estate and this and that. I'm like, Bruh, Which I'm is sorry. the dumbest thing ever. I as get it. As long as people but... are walking the earth and we're not creating this, like, dystopias and shit, mm-hmm. 
tangible things are going to be valuable. They're going to have value. But it makes more money to sell people on that shit. Yeah. yeah it's, it, I think what it is really is I think the majority of people are suffering from like escapism. Mm -hmm. Everyone's trying to escape reality instead of live in it. And they can sell that dream because they think that they could fucking live in the Sims or something. It's like, no, nigga, you right here. Right, you still gotta you right like here. that. You that's still the have skin that's the dystopian part. Because people gonna like be like this lavish, crazy, cool person on the internet, like in the VR metaverse version. Then in real life, it's like, oh, my life sucks. So yeah, I'm never gonna go. I'm never gonna go you outside. Can't, it, you can't talk to people in real life. Like it's like so many people that like. It's like induced. Oh, fuck, it's not one of those things where I could get canceled, right? Because I'm not saying this I in could, a, I could edit it out. I'm not saying it in a bad way, no. Because, like, what I'm trying to say makes sense, but right. No, this is not a shot to no. It's like it's like they're inducing. They're like um, making themselves be like autistic or something. Mm -hmm. But. Autistic, real autistic people are cooler than yeah, people who yeah, make yeah. themselves that way because they're mm -hmm. fucking smart and they just communicate in their own way. There's, wait, I honestly wait, don't wait. think there's anything wrong with them. But yeah. it's like you're making yourself antisocial. You're making yourself have like social anxiety because you don't want to fucking go outside. We've we've gotten to a weird point in time where like some people fetishize like this this like some people have actual problems. Yeah, and then like some people want to be that and it's yeah. like well how do you aspire to to be someone that has an actual sickness how do you like want to you, you know like you you want this to be like your brand like it's it's fucking weird and i honestly you know what i think the problem is what's the problem it's so simple nobody knows what love is <laughs> <laughs> no, very, very, very true. Um, Nobody knows what that feels like. Nobody knows what like humanness really feels like anymore. And everyone's like trying to be this or that. And like this, even in real life, like we're all like everyone's like I'm part of this clique and they dress this way and whatever the case is. It's like, everybody's just trying to be accepted. Yeah, they're everybody's they're trying to be they loved. Want to be loved, mm -hmm. and I think love is like the most beautiful thing. And nobody knows how to do it. Nobody just knows how to do it. Because you can't be taught it. You just have to, yeah. And you, it's it's one of those a, things where... We live in like a very loveless... We're in a very loveless space. And like, I just... I be trying to do shit. How would you How would you describe what love is to somebody who doesn't who never understand what it. love is? Yeah, you can It's can't. indescribable. Mm -hmm. You can't... I think that lack of passion is like they're one in the same like they parallel mm -hmm. each other like people who've never experienced love don't know what it feels like also can never be passionate about something mm -hmm. and it's like that is so that sorry feeling. for them but being I passionate know how to about fix something it. Is like if i could fix it i would but i can't fix it for everybody it's not your job to fix it i know i know that's what i learned in therapy <laughs> <laughs> all you could do is live your life and some people not going to be at the same point in their life as you. And right. you got to, the real question is, are you willing to wait for them to get to that point? Or or do you got better shit to do? Yeah, I don't, I don't think waiting. And sometimes maybe the person's worth waiting for them to progress to that point for. I don't know. I can, Like everybody make different decisions. Yeah, you can't wait like a sitting duck though. You got to wait. You got to just give them space. And if they happen to meet you somewhere, then cool. But right. you still got to like do your own shit. But like also, I think everybody is on their own journey. And it's just, it's cool when we can meet. At the, at the same points but you gotta be okay with like knowing that at the end of the day it's like my journey your journey and we met here but we're still on separate paths yeah like it I just like just because we meet the journeys don't have to become the same journey right exactly. I hate when people think that that's what a relationship is it's like no any relationship is like alright I could do my thing you could do your thing mm -hmm. we meet we don't do the same thing right I mean even if we do the same thing it's not like I'm 
taken away from you doing your thing Dang, and like yeah, people no. think like all right this is happening now now we can't do nothing right it's like it's now like, we can't do shit <laughs> how does that make sense right it's like it's like all right well we both gonna throw away all of our dreams for what why why we don't, don't gotta to be do that. that it doesn't have to be that um it's a it's a support system that's all it should be so what's what's next for for you mm. I'm doing a lot right now honestly um I think that what's next for me just as a person and as a human is that I'm learning how to still stay like loving and virtuous and be like the person that I've always been that people mm -hmm. hopefully see me as in the person that I want to be. Um, I think you come off that way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Most people that like I've, I've talked uh, like to you to about you to them. Okay. There, there we go. Mm -hmm. Most people that I've, talked about you to them that don't even sound right i get what you're trying to say yeah <laughs> they agree <laughs> great so it, it, it's in there yeah i think that i'm just trying to um stay the course and i think that sometimes that means that i run into um people that don't have the same values as me and um it's hurtful because I want to like hold them up to standards that I have for myself, mm -hmm. but I can't do that. And so yeah. I think that what's next for me is true acceptance of people and like accepting them for who they are, not who I want them to be. And being able to say like, this experience was great for the time that we were able to like match up, but it's okay if it no longer fits. Right. You yeah. Know? Um, Some stuff is meant to be like a moment. Yeah. You know? so I and think, I don't mean that like that has to be the end of everything. Right. I think that from like a more ethereal and like spiritual place, that's what's next for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think boundaries are what's next for me. I think that boundaries are always what's next. Right. No, for everybody. <laughs> right. And my non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. Like gotta stick to I, those. I, I, I am an honest person mm -hmm. and like my main non-negotiable right now and forever is that I cannot be surrounded with people who lie mm -hmm. or who, who like will forsake honesty for whatever reason. Because that's one of them things that is just there's no point. Yeah. And, it, and you, you can't know, like, change that out of mm -hmm. out of anyone. So it's like for me, I think that that's a manipulative trait. Yeah, everyone who's in my life has to have that virtue. And if they don't have that, like, it doesn't matter how much I care about you, how much I love you, like, mm. you got to go. And so I think that that's, like, what's next for me is, like, I'm turning the corner on, like, being able to stand up and, like, my decisions, whether, like, I'm alone or with people. Mm. And also, like, just standing on what I believe and not trying to, like, make people bend and break to the way that I see them or where I see they could go because they're on their own path. Right. Um, but hopping off the fucking soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> but. Right. What's next for me, like, tangibly, um, I'm still DJing. Mm -hmm. You be doing um, that. Yeah, I be DJing and shit, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I'm finna do the Jazz and Reggae Fest in May, which All is, right. like, really big. It's at UCLA. I think it's going to be, like, a really big show. I'm excited for that. Um, and I have my residency with the homies hyphen and Kenny says at the blind barber in Culver city every other Wednesday. I think the next one is May 4th. Mm. So we're doing that. Um, DJing my homie Ryan's 30th what, what, birthday. You said that's Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday. I'm gonna pull up to that yeah, one. Pull up, pull up. Yeah. So that, so we're doing the DJ shit. I have a deadline for everybody who's been asking about fucking you niggas have a good day <laughs> shirts. <laughs> Yeah, bring them I back. I have a deadline to bring them back in June. Uh, well not, not in June. I, I'm not going to say that because we just said we we do moving on. That's the a perfect happening. summer shirt. Right. We're bringing them back in the summer. Mm -hmm. I have a deadline to put some back into production by the summertime. So that's that. 
um, accents as a film. That's hold, hard. Hold that thought. That's hard. Don't know when, but that sounds like it's gonna take a lot. It's planned. <laughs> Accents, like like a lot of work. Accents as a film. Because knowing what like what went into into the one that's out now, yeah. like and like how like it it just only makes sense for it to be a film. It does, though. right, right. Like, but knowing how like in depth <laughs> like you do with with like or that you go with like like creating like these experiences, I I know like how how much mm. you're gonna put into that. So that's gonna be tight. Yeah, accents as a film is what's next. Like. That is like my major goal. I've never been a filmmaker, but I'm about to become one. <laughs> hey, you um, can do it. Yeah, and and love, love is next. Like I want babies and a family, babies and all the other shit. Babies. But like I have to like, you know, really like be in a space to receive all of that. So yeah. hopefully that's next too. Um. It'll happen when it happens. Right. But yeah, I'm just, I'm always doing shit. I can't have no choice but to do shit. Because the day that I stop doing shit, y'all might as well just call me and check on me. <laughs> Be like, girl, are yeah, you okay? I ain't, I ain't heard from you. <laughs> right. Because if I didn't do shit, it's literally because I died. Mm. I'm still here. Yeah. So I'm always doing but shit. <laughs> still doing shit. Yeah. Um, it. Yeah. It's been cool, though, because this year, I feel like I... I have a job now. A job. And so, yeah. And so that's cool. Like, because now I'm back in a space where it's like, I can create just to create. Cause it's fun mm-hmm. and not because, and for a while as a, as I was freelancing and that was like my main thing, I was creating out of obligation. Yeah. And so that wasn't that fun anymore. And so I feel like the, like getting a job, which everyone seems to be against like, bro, if you broke, go get a fucking job. Right. Like stop being against jobs. I want everybody to stop being a bitch. There's nothing wrong with having a, a job, job if you're doing something right. that you like doing or Listen, it's aligned with your path. Being broke is not cool. Exactly. Get a fucking job. <laughs> Anyways, so I got a job and it is cool because it, it it took the stress off from like, I haven't had a job in like four years. It took mm. the stress off of like me like if people don't support then i don't eat like it took the stress off of it and i think that i feel like it's fun again like i feel like i'm doing shit just because i want to do it and i feel like that does make it a lot when you're in that energy that's when you reap more support Mm -hmm. because you like people talk about like being like like, being at the right vibration like and like you're not dependent you're not like desperate for it right you know and you never you never gonna get the right outcome when you're at that point where you're desperate Mm -hmm. even if you 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 really need it to happen it's gonna happen the wrong way exactly you know and then it's it's just gonna set you back Mm -hmm. there's never the like you talk about setting intentions earlier like you can't be desperate setting the setting the intention right you can't. like that's right. not the place to to do any of that from mm-hmm. so you have a purple orb on your head <laughs> <laughs> no it's like on your forehead well but i that's obviously good. can't see it i can't see myself. is it a light what is light this, is it reflecting i don't Oh no, that's crazy! I put my glasses on, I can't see it. Mm. <laughs> see, see what, see oh, what no, them I lenses think it be, be that. doing. It's no, more it than likely be. that. Yeah, it might be that, but that's also purple. it looked like you're mm-hmm. like balanced. Mm-hmm. You, 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 I like that. You, you're, yeah. Yeah, I'm you're good. We're good. We're here. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's nice to see. Yeah, same. Shout out to the light in the sky. Yeah. The purple one. The purple light. <laughs> yeah. This has been my first. These last two years, like, so I, like, started, like, freelancing and, and like, working from home last year. Mm-hmm. And then, like, this year, I kind of just been doing whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't really like that. Doing whatever? Like, just, like, not having no obligation. Oh, yeah. I don't like That's that weird. either. weird. Like, you just be out here, like. Even no, though, even though I get stuff done, it's yeah. like, what did I do? I don't feel like I did nothing. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I was getting more comfortable with like 
waking up and like it, it's it's very cool to be able to wake up and do what the fuck you want every single day like that was really tight mm. but also i came to the realization that on the days where i don't fill that space that void of like do what the fuck you want what the fuck am i gonna do like i, I be feeling like like i'm not shit i <laughs> like, definitely be have like all the days start right. blending together and then it's like some days are just like a shell of a day because nothing happened right exactly and so it's like Bruh, we gonna then, be even if, if you did stuff it still feel like okay well nothing happened right if we're gonna be here like we might as well use the time to make shit and do shit like don't just be sitting around yeah. like if you're gonna be here bro just make the best of it because we're gonna all get out of here one day right so might as well enjoy yourself while you're here <laughs> right that's the point exactly like i try I think that for me, like, I, I struggle with anxiety a lot. Same. And, um, I, listen, and I get, like, you, you actually, me and you became friends. That's when I first started getting, like, panic attacks, mm. you remember? Mm-hmm. It's a lot. And I, the way that I have, like, fought that was by stringing together good days. Mm. Like, whether it's, like, go outside, go to the beach, go get drinks. Like, I try to, like, really just live fucking life. Like, See, we've handled that two totally different ways. <laughs> You've handled that by being more, like, in solitude. I right? just smoke a lot. And smoke a lot? Okay. Because mainly, like... Weed is great. <laughs> it's all right. Um, I think... Remember, I didn't really smoke too much. Yeah. I think I found it's found its place in my life. Mm. It, it helps me to be able to do things. Because like I'll I'll be so anxious that I can't even leave the house. Oh, like yeah, it'll yeah. be at the point where I I can't go nowhere. I feel you. Like and like it's like all right I gotta get over get this. Get out of this so you, you can know? like relax and be like all right at least make one step. Once you make yeah, one step. Yeah, because once I'm once I'm doing something. I'm yeah, fine. you don't feel it. Yeah, yeah. I feel. Um, shrooms also helps. That's why I started microdosing. Yeah. It it it's helped it's helped me a lot like mentally. Shrooms. Honestly, like, once I finally submitted to the experience that Shrooms was taking me on, like... Mm. That's the most important part. Yeah, I was like, yo, this is a blessing. Like, Shrooms was my first therapist. Mm -hmm. Like, it just helped me sort through my thoughts and feel and be present. And, like, I was able to go months at a time without having a panic attack or having anxiety after I did Shrooms because life just made sense. And it's not like an addictive thing. Like it's like you take what the lessons are, the, the conversation you're having with yourself and with God, whatever whatever that means to people, um, and you actually leave with the clarity to be able to apply them for lengthy periods of time. And yeah. so that was very beautiful. I think that the last stream trip I had was uncomfortable, but even that was a good thing yeah they always make yeah. you psychedelics always like make you confront mm -hmm. something and they're they're really good with that that's the main reason that i use them i, I normally don't like until this yeah. i wasn't doing psychedelics with people i normally just until be in so, in yeah. the house by myself right i i was i've done them by myself a lot but if i have done them with someone it ended up being an experience where we ended up still having our own experiences mm -hmm. even if we were in the same place mm -hmm. It was like we were still by ourselves. Because a lot of people be fighting the, the like, yeah. you know. I just be like, don't talk to me, bro. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm fucking, like, ooh, when I go hiking on shrooms, oh, my God. I'm, like, fucking picking at rocks and throwing shit. I've never done shit. outside stuff on you shrooms. Need to. I've done outside stuff on acid. I've never done acid. Acid is so much more electric is to it me, next though. next level? Yeah. That's it's not like, next it's level. Like, it's just. like shrooms on crack. I don't want that. It's, it's not even that that is more intense it's just like that feeling of like being happy yeah it's just like really happy do you get a stomach ache no nah. because you gotta you gotta remember to eat nausea. yeah that's the only thing i hate about it you gotta remember I'm to hella eat. nauseous right now guys mm. <laughs> did you eat before this i had a breakfast burrito at like three o'clock Huh? Breakfast burrito? Yeah, no, I ain't eat. That ain't breakfast. I need to eat. I was Three supposed to get worldwide breakfast. tacos, but they closed. It's okay. I'm going to get some food after this. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I feel great. I feel 
Yeah, my shroom trips, man, they've been amazing. Now that I think about it, and it's crazy because I haven't done. Do you remember them. the first one? The, f- oh, the first one. Mm. Yeah, I remember the first one. That shit well, was well, weird. <laughs> Okay, so I was at in my apartment in I used to live in Playa del Rey. My apartment, mm-hmm. and um, my roommate made me some tea, some shroom tea. It was like vanilla. It was with like vanilla and like English black tea, mm-hmm. and so I drank. We split it, so he drank a cup and I drank a cup. And he was just like playing video games and shit. And I was on the couch. And I just started writing. I had this journal that my friend Isis made. A journal. Yeah. And it had like this texture paper. And I started like kind of like making a grid mm-hmm. on the paper. And then I ended up writing this um, random like thought about like humans and like bestiality and like how everybody's like low-key beastly and that shit is Mm -hmm. like makes me uncomfortable and i wasn't really seeing anything i didn't have like a visual experience until i went outside and i went outside because i had one of my friends my homegirl Bijan, was in the apartment she was supposed to be like babysitting me like trip sitting me (laughs) and it's good to have one of those yeah but i was chilling like i was on the couch and i didn't feel like it hit Mm-hmm. But it didn't is because we were in a fucking apartment with white walls like it was nothing to activate that yeah, yeah. right and then so she was like well I'm gonna just go so I called her an Uber and when I went outside to fucking then put it, her in the car hit. that's when it hit <laughs> and I remember I was looking at the fucking moon and the moon was like glowing like purple and green on the outside mm-hmm. and then I was walking back and I noticed like a very intricate spider web and then and like spiders listen it was a lot like it's like shit i was noticing shit that i just wouldn't look yeah, at it make you like yeah. psychedelics definitely Pay make attention. you appreciate a lot yeah and then i but it was it was kind of i was kind of scared though the first time and then when i got upstairs i remember that i like was looking down the hallway of my apartment like and it was just doors mad doors mm. and i just like paced the hallway but it's because it looked like it, the hallway looked endless you know, and I just was pacing the hallway, pacing the hallway, and then I feel like that would be scary. Yeah, it was it was kind of scary, yeah, especially because it wasn't colorful. Like I probably should have just stayed outside. Mm. And I was like pacing the hallway, and then I went inside, and I just like went to sleep because I was like feeling too much. And I feel it. Yeah, and I'm after weird, that, though, I really like hallways. You like hallways? I like hallways <laughs> a lot. Okay. <laughs> <But> continue. <laughs> what do you like about hallways? They're just comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like 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 being in a hotel, the hallway. Uh-huh. I like if I could have a room that was That's a hallway, in a hallway. Like so you the, like you like small spaces. I like, like I really like, like small spaces. Okay. So you're not claustrophobic. You feel safe. Mm-hmm. I see. Mm-hmm. In a small space. That makes sense. I and I don't like using up a lot of space. Yeah, you like very you know. minimal. I'm I'm good with whatever makes everybody else happy. You're like a natural minimalist. Low yeah. Key. Unfortunately. Think about that. That's crazy. I would rather have a bunch of shit. Yeah. I can't take care of shit though. Yeah, I think you think you would rather have a bunch of shit. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff I want to collect. Oh, I see. You know, um, and I don't really want to clutter things until I could collect those things. Yeah, that makes sense. You now need after the space. that, then things might get a little cluttered. All right. Yeah, uh, I feel you. We'll see. I feel you on like not taking up mad space though. I feel like I don't like to take up mad space, but I feel like I end up doing it anyway. I think it's just in my nature to be colossal. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just. That's a that's a good trait. I just though. take up mass space, like as a per- person, as a presence, as yeah. a human. It just is what it is. Like I don't know. I don't yeah, even be trying different. to be like this. I just be like this. <laughs> just naturally you. Yeah. But like in the physical, even too, like I feel like I'm outgrowing my apartment, which is new to me. I thought I was gonna be in my apartment. Shout out to my apartment. I love my apartment. Shout out apartment. My first time <laughs> having my apartment by myself. Yeah, that is a big deal. Yeah, and uh, it's been two years now that I've lived there. 
which is another weak ass clap. Damn. <laughs> Imagine that was a full batch of claps. <laughs> That's funny, but yeah. And so, I recently figured out that like I'm outgrowing my space, mm-hmm. and that like even as one person, I might need a two bedroom. Yeah. Because what I don't like is I like to draw and paint a lot, and, I, and like. It's therapeutic for me because it's the only thing that I've done that I haven't like monetized yet, and it's super therapeutic because I just I don't have any expectations of myself. Like I just be putting mad colors on the paper and whatever the fuck comes out comes out. How long you been painting? Uh, I started painting honestly during the pandemic. I like you hate painting. You hate it? Yeah. Why? You know, mix the colors, and then when the color the wrong color, color yeah, but then you gotta you, rinse the shit. I don't want to do that. Yeah, and so that's the thing. That's why I need another space because right now I do it in my living room. But then when it's time for me to like read a book or watch TV or something, I'll be mad because the mess is right there. Yeah. But I need a room that can be messy. Right. Because for, for painting, you kind of need yeah, that. Yeah. I need a room that like once I'm done painting, I don't have to clean it up that day. Mm-hmm. I can leave it there. And then in the morning, I can come and clean just it up. come back into that space and then yeah, leave the space. Exactly. You and always so right, need the ability to leave the space. Right. Right now, it's like I have a one bedroom, so I can go in my room and like go to sleep. But like, I like like my living room to always be like open and clean and comfortable. I mean, you could you could move. Exactly. You could leave California. I could move. There's so many states where, where what you paying now yeah, could I, I get think, you a house. I'm thinking about moving to New Orleans. But I'm Good not place. ready yet, but maybe one day. Yeah. But I love New Orleans. Shout out New Orleans. My niggas in New Orleans. Yeah, you used to live down. in New Orleans, didn't you? Didn't yeah. you go to school in New Orleans? Mm-hmm. And I, I went to school in Hammond, Louisiana, actually. Mm. And that's like 30 minutes outside I of New Orleans. I think I have one relative in Hammond. You have one relative? I, you're from New Orleans. From Baton Rouge. You're from Baton Rouge. You're from mm. Louisiana. Mm. I'm from Louisiana. People say that. Louisiana. <laughs> oh, there's that song. I don't be. I I left pretty. Me and my mom left pretty pretty early and went yeah, to Chicago. Nice. So uh, I don't really know much. About it, we yeah. moved so much that I ain't really have time to adapt nowhere. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, you ever seen a ghost in New Orleans? Have I ever seen a ghost in New Orleans? That's the only memory I have of New Orleans. It's, it's like... You've so, seen a ghost? So me and my cousin... Because uh, my mom, I forgot what the... It's like Cafe something. They got beignets. My mom Dumont. really like... Yeah. Cafe Dumont. Yeah. My mom really likes beignets. So we were going there, like, mm-hmm. me and, like, a few cousins. And, like, me and my cousin talked to this lady uh, that was, like, handing out, like, these pamphlets. Or, or, and, and then we, like, walked back across the street. Mm-hmm. And there was nobody there, and like there was a whole stand and everything. So like, y- you know, like that just didn't really make any sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like that's the only memory I have of like being in New Orleans. Mm. That's interesting because I've seen ghosts, but like, not in the way that people think. They're not physical things. They just be like, like a presences. Flash. Yeah, presences. Like a, it'd be like a flash in the corner of my eye. And I'll kind of look at it, but I don't feel uncomfortable, but I know it's a presence. Mm. And it's like some shit like that. It's never like a, a human um, form. Mm. So that's interesting. But I, I mean, you know, it's voodoo town. So yeah. that's not unlike. And then I, I, I wasn't like scared. Yeah, no, it they be there. And yeah. you just have to be like, yo, what's good? Yeah. <laughs> I I feel like we need to get more comfortable with like like paranormal activity. (laughs) Yeah, just and like, just because we're taught to believe things are a certain way, Mm -hmm. you know, like that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is bad. Yeah, you know, absolutely. A a lot of times, like what we like, because what what I've learned, or you know, like about that realm, or at least about ghosts or whatever. it's it's not always that like they're like trying to harm you, right? It's just like they have unfinished work or like they didn't. Yeah, they, they, they didn't they died what they're in, doing in a way, here. right? So they're trapped here. It's like you feel mm. bad for them more right. so than like be afraid of them. Yeah, and they don't be bothering people, really. right? Like, whether you believe in them or not, demons are fucking humans. To be honest, we be doing all the fucked up weird right. shit. 
they just be chilling on the other side or like in between sides. They just in between. Yeah. That's all they. They is. stuck. They stuck. But they out here with us. Yeah. I think we just yeah we gotta give grace to those presences and the messages we receive mm-hmm. and the way that they show up. I've been um, getting really comfortable with like my lineage and like certain like uh, gifts and stuff that was given to me that like I didn't even like seek out <laughs> and that shit has been kind of crazy but yeah I like think what? my um my like I guess psychic or like my um connection with the divine comes with me through like snake dreams like i be having dreams of snakes Mm -hmm. often Mm -hmm. it's been happening to me since i was a child and i never knew like in my i'm dominican so my family like like santeria shit is like part of our culture right but like my mom she never like looked at it as like some dark magic type shit it's always in connection with god yeah you know a lot of this stuff is misinterpreted right it's and so she just will always tell me, like, I have these gifts and you're going to have them <laughs> and it's not up to you. And I right, just always yeah. used to be like, girl, what the fuck is you talking about? Like, you only have some shit if you believe in it and blah, 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 blah. And then when things started happening to me, I was like, well, I guess it chose me. <laughs> but then people also forget how powerful believing in something is. Yeah. Because, like, you, like, the world is fully what we, what we make it. Right. And, like, if you think a certain way then i feel like that's that's your reality Mm -hmm. you know like things communicate within the reality that you feel you exist in right exactly but yeah no the with the dreams this just started happening to me during like certain transitional times in my life and then when it got really real is when i started seeing the snakes in real life Mm. in places that i wouldn't normally see them like yeah that's example, a random that's yes, a random OD. thing to see there was a snake um a black snake it was like a like a long like it was pretty big but it was like a grass snake you know yeah. it wasn't it was harmless i've never seen a snake outside of a zoo i've seen them in real that's life. so in that that's what i mean like that's crazy yep. to it's crazy right and that motherfucker was me and my sister were working out in, in florida in front of my mom's house mm. And it was behind me while I was doing yoga. Mm. So I'm like mid like upward dog or whatever. (laughs) And I look behind me and I see this black thing flickering. And I look and like right behind my yoga mat is a fucking snake Snake. there. Yeah. And I was just like, I was in the middle of a very, very emotionally turbulent time. And I think that at that time it was so turbulent that the presence couldn't come to me in a dream. It had Mm. to come to me in physical form mm. for me to get it for me to understand what i was going through. i think a lot of time we receive cues and it's like you, you you just if you're not like you know at the point or like tuned to be aware yeah. of, of these things you like not i'm going, trying to tell you something right right <laughs> fuck you know like you're I, not I, listening. I feel like we always got like helpers yeah you know that are trying to guide us on mm-hmm. like in the right direction and it's like whether you see the hint or and the messages or not, the messages are still going to be there. Sent. Yeah, I think that w- once I started um, paying attention, my painful transitions or like my hard emotional times got easier to navigate because it was like the awareness that you're actually on a in on a journey and make it easier for you to like just let the shit pass through mm-hmm. you versus you fighting with it. You right. know. It's like, I remember, like, fucking the first time I was going through some crazy shit and I was having a lot of dreams and shit, I just was, like, crying. And I was telling my mom, I'm like, why does this feel like this? Like, I was just, like, enraged and crying and sobbing and just always just, like, it was too much. And it was because I couldn't understand that these are things that are just going to happen in life and you have to let it kind of flow through you. Like, you know, I wasn't... I was just like, this hurts so bad versus like, this is something that I'm feeling and it is painful, but pain is a part of life. Right. And it's yeah. passing through It's me. a necessary. Yeah. It's a, unfortunately, it's necessary. But it's necessary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, 
you know, people be like, I'm sad. I'm experiencing sadness does not mean that you're depressed. Does not. It literally means that you're a fucking human being and you're experiencing everybody gets sad. Also, everybody gets depressed. Right. (laughs) I feel like prescribed like and I I'm not no doctor. We all go through right, yeah. We all go through moods. Right. I don't feel like like depression is something that you could like prescribe something for. Yeah. You know, like And that should be backfiring because when people be on antidepressants thing. and then they get off of them, then they feel suicidal. Yeah. Like my cousin was on antidepressants and he was saying that was the first time he actually got suicidal. Right. We're not doctors. Because he was so numb, no. you know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. We're not about. doctors, so if y'all you everybody make their own choices. Yeah. Let me let's just say that. I don't I don't agree with it though. I'm gonna say uh, Yeah, what, and my know. stance is that I don't agree with it. I think that Niggas be fucking people up even more. Right. People just need to talk and be okay and be human with their and it, and emotions. And have love. It's love. It's always love. It's always the answer. That's the answer, literally. Like, and it's hard because it's so simple. We be making shit so complicated. I mean, a lot of people raised not being loved, even though mm-hmm. they, because what people think is, is love. So, like, when I think back, like, on the memories of my dad, right? Mm-hmm. In his mind, I think for him, I. Th- like he thought love was buying me shit so every time i would see him i would get some new shoes i would get some you know but it's like we riding in the car and all these and like we're not talking yeah you know so it's like he thinks he's showing it but he doesn't know that he's not like or even yeah yeah and it's like i didn't interpret that as that but there were moments that like Mm -hmm. i interpreted as love but i don't think that he would have thought those moments were him Love. displaying yeah. that yeah like man every it's just crazy because people just communicate in different ways mm-hmm. and when you don't know how to communicate with your words like you really got to pay attention to it's a lot of adults that don't know how yeah, to communicate the non-verbal with their things words. yeah but like it sucks that we are like left to decipher that shit for ourselves like that's that's my life. mom don't tell me she loved me then how do i know <laughs> Well, when she cooked dinner, <laughs> like you right. know, it's some real and, black people shit. Right. Like, and then unfortunately, fuck. if that's all you know, you are gonna bring that into a relationship, a relationship in the future. Where your friendships and anything. Yeah, and it's like it if sucks. you never realize that, then that's gonna go on for generations. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, and it's like, oh, I do this because of this. Right. And then, I think that the universe, though, I think with our generation, like millennial generation, the universe was like, I have had enough. He was like, fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. And I think all of us have changed, have like started deconditioning all the bullshit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like, I'm proud of us because we literally, we was on the verge of living in reality and analog style of creation and everything and on the verge of like the, the height of the internet. And we were there we, for the creation of the we internet. We were there for the creation of the internet. We were there for social internet. and social. Like, we know how to maneuver and different ways and we're we're like the first that's been part of like we're the first generation that's been part of like multiple eras yeah did you have a myspace yeah i had a myspace so there's (laughs) like there's one point remember i told you you was oh no my tumblr Mm. this your song was on my tumblr not my myspace i remember you said that but like so in that the way that i think think about like like what's happened right Mm -hmm. like living through that people used to know how to code yeah. People used to like, and, and this was you could be creative, yeah. but slowly it's like, and then all it right. became important, right? And now but, we act like we can't do it. Nigga but, used to do it, right? E- exactly. <laughs> but then even on the other side of that, like we had the tools to be creative, and that was mm-hmm. normal. But then we went to all right, well, a Facebook account, no more creativity. Create shit. Yeah. Then you get, a, like you get a you get a Instagram and a Twitter, just pictures or just yeah. you know, and it's like just keep boiling it down to something. You know, it's like well, yeah. you take long form ideas and opinions. And then it was like for and, photography, and then now it's like for fucking ads and shopping and whatever. It's weird. It's just but MySpace but you you see it. Shout out to fucking MySpace. Shout out to the bulletin board. Feel me? I had the um the sad songs <laughs> going. I think my my fucking MySpace was like poetry is passion. Wow. <laughs> Thirty one. Oh it was so God. corny. Some random number. Yeah, I was always like emotional and like in my feelings. Did you have an aim? Yeah, I had an aim. My aims. I had three aims. My first one was. Do you remember them? Yeah, Baby Green, nineteen ninety three. And then my second one was 
Miss Luna 31. And it was from when, first of all, my basketball number was 31. So everything was like, and then I had one that was like Skateboard Chick 31. Oh, wow. Stupid. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. SK8. <laughs> It was stupid. Yeah, we was young. Right. And, but Miss Luna 31 was from Lupe Fiasco. He mm. said, my I am name is Miss Luna. You could hit me at the six. That's hard. Yeah. So I made my I, rem- I remember that. Yeah. I, I went with through it. like a phase in life where I ain't really fuck with Lupe. Oh, true. Like Everybody when, was when either. When the cool came out. Loved him or hated him. Yeah. Because everybody was telling me that I needed that. Like, oh, you black, you skate. That Why don't Lupe, you? Is Lupe. <laughs> like, no. So I, I just was like, all right, I'm not listening right. to this nigga. Because I remember when he used to be on Hypebeast. Mm. I remember when he used to write on Hypebeast, too. So, like, it, it, it's like I've seen him. You know, like, people right. act like I didn't see it happen. happen yeah. I was there for it happening. I, don't I just don't his, fucking care. Yeah, I don't have to be on his dick. Like, fuck. People be dick riding too fucking much. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get off people's dick. <laughs> Live your life. I just want to say that. Get off people's dick. Live your dick. life. You're not going to get yeah. nowhere doing that. Right. I'm like, bro, it's okay. We, I'm a being, you're a being. We're all out it's here. It's cool being, to appreciate people. It's cool. You appreciate it, but you don't got to fucking be a, like, you could be a fan without being, like, mm-hmm. a weirdo. Yeah, like, it's fine to be, like, a fan of I don't like what you did. 